Today we will show you how to connect a brushless DC motor controller to your electric bike or electric scooter. So what I have here is a 36 volt brushless DC controller I bought from eBay. It's quite cheap. Costs about $16. That's one six. So that's very cheap. The biggest problem I have with this is that it does not come with a user manual. Sometimes a user manual is bright on the box, but it's all in Chinese. I can't read Chinese, so the instruction is pretty much useless. So in a pinch, I turn to Google Translate for help. It's an app where I can download onto my iPhone and it can translate into any languages. All I have to do is to point the camera to the label on the connector and BAM! I got an English translation of the label. But even with Google Translate, I'm still unclear as to what exactly the label means. So the best way to figure this out is just by trying and hope that no smoke will come out. No, I'm just kidding. There's a way to figure this out and I'll show you how. So basically the most critical connectors you must use in order for it to be functional are the power connector to the battery, the three-phase power connector to the motor, hall sensor connector to the motor, and finally, last but not least, the throttle cable connector. All other connectors have extra functions you might or might not need and it's not necessary to connect those. So here's my setup. I have a Swaktron EB5 electric bike and it has a 36 volt brushless DC motor. And this is the 36 volt brushless DC controller that we're gonna talk about. So first let's talk about the main power connector which is this cable here. And it has three wires. The two big wires are the main positive and negative wire which will go to the battery. We have a smaller red wire and this is the switch wire. So when you connect this wire to the main positive, the system will turn on. And over here, I'll show you the switch that I have. So this switch has a couple wires that connects the two red wires together. So one side go to the bigger red wire, one side go to the smaller red wire. Okay, so when it is off, the, syst the whole system is off and it does not consume any power. When I turn it on, now the system is on. Let me show you the voltage of the battery here. And it consumes about 0.06 amp when the switch is turned on and when the system is idle. 0.06 amp is not much, but it will completely drain this bike's battery if I leave it on for 5 days. So this controller does have a phantom load if the system is on but idle. So make sure when you don't use the bike anymore, make sure you turn this off. And you can see here the voltage display is off. So to make sure that it doesn't drain down your battery after a few days, you leave it on. That's very important. The next cable I want to talk about is the throttle cable. It always have three wires red, green, and black. It doesn't always go in this order. Um, for example, this wire has a green in the middle, but my other throttle has a green on the side. So um, you just have to match the color. A basic throttle like this always has three wires, positive, ground, and signal. But sometimes your throttle has a power button or a voltage display, like what I have here. Then they might have more than three wires. The throttle I have here has a voltage display, so it has an extra wire. And this wire, this yellow wire, will go straight to the positive of the system. So over here I've connected the yellow wire to the positive of the switch. Not the main wire, but the, just the switch, so that it only turns on when I turn on the switch. Now the switch is off, so I press this button to turn it on. It will turn on, and I also know that the system is now on. 
and here is the voltage of my battery. The next cable is the hall sensor connector and this connector almost always has five wires. Black is ground, red is positive and the three other signal wires blue, green and yellow and they almost always are in this order. So here's what it looks like on my other controller and it's exactly the same thing. However, not all hall sensor cables have five wires. Some have six wires. For example, this particular bike. The hall sensor that comes from the motor on this bike has six wires. It makes things more complicated. But I found out that it works with this controller. This controller only has five wires on the whole sensor. So I just used five of the color coded wires and connect to the whole sensor wire on the bike. And I just um, ignore the last wire and it still works. I'll talk about that in detail in my next video where I'm trying to upgrade with a new controller on this e-bike. And last but not least, the three-phase power cable that goes with your brushless DC motor. This cable always has three wires and three colors like this, blue, green, and yellow. So all you gotta do is to match up this color from the controller to your motor wires and you are good to go. Sometimes when you hook them up, even when you match these three colors, the motor still spins backwards. So all you gotta do is to switch out these two colors, green and yellow, and it will spin forward again. Or you can use these two wires, two white wires, on the controller to somewhat program the motor to run forward or backward. And this is what I'm gonna talk about next. So these two wires, they are called learning wire or sometimes they call it intelligent wire or smart wire there are many names for these wires but they're usually white and they have connectors on them and they can connect together like so and let me show you another controller that i have here also 36 volt brushless dc controller you can see here they are also white and they can connect together there is absolutely no labels or anything on these wires. So it was kind of a mystery for me when I first got it. Let me show you how to sort of program or condition your controller to run your brushless DC motor using these two wires. You can program it to run forward. You can program it to run backward or you can even run the motor without a whole sensor. First, I'm going to turn on the system. You see that it is about 40.9 volts. Now, I'm going to connect these two wires together. And when you connect these wires together, it will run the motor right away. And it will run in the reverse direction of whatever is programmed in here. Right now, in my controller, it's programmed to run forward. So when I connect these wires together, it will run my wheels backward. Okay. You can hear the motor running, but the wheels not turning. That's because inside the motor it's got gears that prevent the wheel from running backward. But you can hear the motor running and it's running backward. Okay. So now if I want to run it forward, I'm gonna use my throttle. I'm going to move my throttle and let me tilt my bike a little bit so the wheel can turn. Okay, it will stop okay, and it will run forward. Now it's running forward. Okay. So, if I want to program my bike to run forward, this is the time to turn off the motor. Okay, so I'm going to turn it off. And now I'm gonna disconnect these wires, okay? Wires disconnected. Now I'm gonna turn my system back on, okay? And now if I run my throttle, it will remember the last uh, program 
which is going forward, right? There we go. So now if I want to run my model backward, I'm just going to do the same thing. Okay? First, turn on the system. Now connect the wire together. You can see it's running backward. That's because before uh, I connect this wire, the system inside the system is programmed to run forward. But when this is connected, it run in the reverse direction as programmed. So it's going to run reverse right now. And I'm going to turn off the system while that is running. Okay. Turn that off first before you disconnect this cable. Disconnect that. Now it remembers that the motor is going to run backward when you run the throttle. So I'm going to turn it back on again. Okay, it's on. Now we run the throttle. The motor will turn backward. Again, you don't see the wheel spinning because there's gear in the motor that prevents the wheel from spinning backward. And because I don't want my motor to run backward, right, which is pretty much useless for me, I'm going to program it to run forward again. So I'm just going to have to tilt the wheel a little bit because it's going to spin. Plug this back in. Going forward. Turn this off. Now it remembers to run forward the next time I turn it on, but I have to disconnect this first. Now we turn it back on and run it and run forward. And if your brushless DC motor does not have a hall sensor uh, connector, most do, some don't. You can do the same thing to program and condition your controller to run your motor this way. The next cable I want to talk about is this, which has Chinese uh, letters written on it. I use Google Translate and will translate as speed. This cable looks like the throttle cable, except that the wires have different colors. But that's it. Okay, the, the connectors look the same but it's actually for a different function which will allow you to run the motor at a higher speed than normal or at a lower speed than normal. I use Google Translate and what I got was that. But according to my test, the blue wire is actually high speed and the brown wire is actually low speed. So either this label is wrong or Google is wrong. So let me demonstrate. I've got my tachometer here and it's going to measure the RPM of the wheel when it's running to compare the speed between different uh, configurations. So right now this wire has nothing connected to it. Okay. So when I run my throttle, it's going to run at normal speed. RPM. So next, I'm going to connect the black and brown cables together. Okay, this label is wrong, so brown is actually low speed. We will see. I'm going to short out the two connectors here. Okay. 15 RPM. This is black and brown cables connected. So next I'm going to connect the black and blue cables together. Okay, this should be high speed. RPM. So here is the result when the battery is 41 volts. Normal speed is 518 RPM. The voltage of battery is also important because at a lower voltage, you will get a lower speed. Okay. So when I connect brown and black wire together, 
speed is reduced down to 15 RPM. That is 20% reduction in speed. When the blue and black wires are connected, we got 530 RPM, which is an increase of 3% in speed. Not much, but still better than nothing. And using a little bit of math, I can calculate my speed on this bike uh, to be 23 miles per hour when it's not under load. The next cable I want to talk about is the brake cable. It's got a white and black wires on it. And the Google Translate will give me low brake. What does low mean in here? Anyway, so this will work by um, shutting down uh, your system when these two wires are connected. So let me demonstrate. I'm going to run my motor and then at the same time, I'm going to short out these two wires together and it will stop the motor even though my throttle is still on. Okay, so let's try this. Let's see if we can do this with just one hand. See my throttle is on, but the motor is stopped functioning. Okay, when I release it, it work again. The only problem with this is it only has one connector for the brake. My bike has two brakes, right? Front and rear. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to cut this connector and solder one more pair of wires in parallel to this. So I have two pairs in order to connect to the front and rear brakes. Next thing I want to talk about is how to figure out what these cables are without sorting out your system. Because right now we still have quite a few more cables and we don't know what it is. I don't have a manual and Google Translation does not help. Because if you connect it the wrong way, you're going to short out the controller and the next thing you know is going to be a big bang and there's a plume of smoke and you are sent to Mars. Let's take a look at this cable here using Google Translate. It says anti-theft. But the thing is, it's got yellow and red wires on it, which is pretty suspicious. I'm going to take my voltmeter and check this out. Okay, so I'm going to put on the red cable first. Okay, one on the red and then one on the main ground. Aha, see that? 40 volts. So the red carries 40 volts. So let's try the next wire, which is the yellow wire. Okay, yellow to ground. Nothing. Yellow to positive. There you go, 40 volts. So yellow is actually ground. So in this case, you connect the yellow and the red together. It's going to be a big bang. Next wire is the blue wire. Okay, so blue to ground, uh -huh, about 5 volts, blue to main positive, nothing. Okay, so that's 5 volts. So anything that is 5 volts are usually signal cable, so it's safe to connect. But anything that is the main voltage, in this case 40 volts, you have to be very cautious. And if I just measure between red and yellow, there you go, we got 40 volts. Okay, so if we short out red and yellow, it's going to be a big bang. But between blue and yellow, 4.7 volts. So that means it's good to connect. So I'm going to connect, see what happens. Hopefully, no smoke's coming out. Actually, I did this before, so guarantee no smoke, right? Yellow and blue, okay? And this is anti-theft. So guess what it is, right? We'll disable the throttle. Let's try, see if it works. There you go, nothing, right? Throttle stops working. And now if I disconnect 
the pins and it will work right there we go next we got this red connector here that has a word 4 to 8 volts written on it and using google translate it gives me anti-theft red 48 volts black ground and it has red and black wire for a reason right because it carries a system voltage so if you short out these two pins in there it's gonna be a bang so I guess this is good for running an anti-theft device that runs on system voltage and in my case it's gonna be 40 volts but I think this is more useful for running LED lights front headlight or rear lights that runs on system voltage Another wire which I don't know what it is, is this orange wire. I measured voltage from this wire to ground. Give me 5 volts. So it's obviously some kind of signal wire, but because I don't have a manual, I'm not sure what it is. Just going to connect it. Hopefully no smoke's coming out. So here we go. <coughs> Just kidding. Disconnected, but nothing happened. I tried a throttle, try the throttle, but it works as normal. Nothing happened, so I'm not sure what this wire is for. So we've gone through all of these wires except these three wires, right? Using Google Translate, I got system ground on this yellow wire, the other two wires, no labels. And if I measure from this wire to main positive, I got 40 volts, right? So obviously these are all ground. But the colors are different. This one is green, it's yellow, black. Go figure. Next video, I'm going to talk about how to upgrade the controller on this e-bike with a new controller so it can give me more speed. So you can see from here. I get 23 miles per hour, so that's a lot faster than the standard regular speed on this bike because it only gives me about 15 miles per hour and sometimes when I ride long distances 15 miles per hour, that's 1.5, right? 15 miles per hour is really, really slow and just like dragging on and on so uh, a faster speed on this bike will make it more a lot more useful. And that's it for now folks. Thanks for watching and I will see you next time.